Hello to all my friends out there. So here we are again. Another day of the Ponte Rosa. Well, life is good. I hope everyone is doing okay. So I have some of my uh, mint tea left from yesterday. Uh, this stuff is good cold and hot. If hot, I like cinnamon, uh, lemon, and honey. And if cold, you know, if it's really, really icy cold, just plain is really good. And uh, this is the Dollar Tree Peppermint Tea, if you have never tried it. So I had one of my brilliant ideas. My brilliant idea was try to come up with one way to save money every single day. That was my brilliant idea. So the first thing I came up with, I actually came up with two. The first one I came up with was eat more vegetables. That's cheaper. And then the second one I came up with was try to find the fullest packages. So um, I bought these bean sprouts yesterday and this package was like jam full of bean sprouts to the point that the top was like smashed on there and the other ones were like half full and I thought well maybe something's wrong with this but they all had the same expiration date this one I mean this one still has more in it than the other ones uh, did so uh, the two ways so what I'm gonna do is write these in my notebook and if I was successful then in one year, I would have 365 ideas how to save money. So number one, eat more vegetables. So I think that's a good idea. And I wanted to mention something. Okay, I had bean sprouts. I rinsed them off. And uh, what is really, 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 really good with bean sprouts is radishes. And I forgot to mention that to you Uh yesterday so um when i bought this romaine lettuce i try to find the biggest leafiest romaine lettuce um every once in a while i forget to do it but i'm going to be um keeping these uh money saving tips in my mind so if everything if you're finding the bean sprouts with twice as many bean sprouts and you're finding the romaine and lettuce that's twice as much lettuce uh, over time you know you're gonna have more food so uh what i'm doing is half of the plate uh with vegetables so i have a little you know whatever you have and i have some radish because I, i'm trying to cut them thin a uh, radish is really really yummy with bean sprouts i don't know why it just it's Good, try it you guys, you will like it. So I just want to cut my radish in little pieces so I can have little bites of radish on my bean sprouts. I think um, three vegetables is enough. And then I have a green onion, which I will cut. I wasn't paying attention to the chef, chefing videos, so I'm not sure if there's a more efficient way to uh, slice these. So this is a tasty little combination and it's a cheap little um, salad too. about half of my plate this is diet friendly too uh no no uh severe diets um and then i have some caesar salad dressing that i need to use up so we'll have some caesar salad dressing so that's a pretty decent little salad that's a little mountain range. Okay, so now. 
Okay, so I can get by on that. So look, this is a pretty substantial salad. Not expensive, but yeah, I'm not going to be going hungry. Not at all. No. No, 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 no. Okay, if you watch my previous video, you know that today I went to Grocery Outlet looking for uh, peanut butter. And uh, I got these two packages of pork chops really cheap. One for me and one for my son. Um, I'm going to be stockpiling uh, pork chops in my freezer today for lunch. I want to show you what I had. This was like one of my better lunches, actually. I was telling my son, I usually buy uh, cheap peanut butter, but they didn't have any cheap peanut butter. So I bought this stuff, two of them, for like $11 at Grocery Outlet. And then I had honey, so I had a peanut butter and honey sandwich. But what was really, really delicious is I had my uh, bread from Walmart. And I got these breads 48 cents because I got them. Boy, was that good. That just really hit the spot, you guys. Okay, so now what about, what am I having for dinner? Well, I'm having pork chops. That's what. And then, uh, so this is a really good dinner. I got these um, potatoes at um, at 99 cent only. Nice big ones. Okay, so now, what I did with the pork chops is I, I fried them on both sides. And then I just uh, baked them down until they were done. So um, what I'm doing is half salad and then uh, one quarter of the plate meat. And then one quarter of the plate is going to be yummy. Um, uh, ooh, this looks good. One of the, um, I could make an awesome pork chop sandwich out of this. So that's why I'm just going to save the other one. I might eat it. I never know. And then, you know, I have my potato. And now, of course, if you know me, I want to make some gravy. If I don't eat it all tonight, that is fine. What did I do with my flour? <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, so... Uh, because I um, stockpile all kinds of powdered milk, I can, uh, or tonight I'm going to use evaporated milk, I can always make gravy. And uh, uh, mushroom gravy would be good, but milk gravy made out of pork drop drippings is really, really good. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to watch my grandmother make the gravy. I watched her make the gravy a zillion times, and I never got sick of it. I used to love to watch my grandmother cook. I used to love to be in the kitchen. For one thing, she was always cooking some good stuff in the kitchen. Um, what I loved is we would go to church, of course, and then after church, my grandmother would either fry chicken or else sometimes during church, she would bake a roast. And then, you know, when we would get home from church, uh, the roast would be all ready for us to eat. Uh, they live right down the street from the church. 
Uh, someday I'm going to show you guys my grandmother's fan. So where she lived was in Bunkerville, Nevada. I don't know if any of you know where Mesquite is. And it's brutally hot there. And we would sit in church. And my grandmother would fan herself. It was so hot. That was our hardships back in the day, you know, before central air. So I'm going to use half evaporated milk and half water. So I'm just going to pour a half a cup of each in there. And so since I'm using my gravy, you know, my... Uh, my uh, drippings, I don't really need butter on my um, my potato. You can put it on there, but you don't really need it since. So I want to make like a little moat in here. To capture as much gravy as I possibly can. That's why I'm going to all the trouble to make this. <laughs> all the trouble, it's almost ready. And then a little salt and pepper is all you need. This is going to be good, you guys. And this is a very cost effective. I think, um, you know, because the pork chops were so uh, cheap, they were about 40 or 50 cents each. And, uh, you know, after you uh, you get all those pork chops and you want pork chops for dinner, it's no big deal. Okay, now, so, okay, so you get your food in your stockpile and you get water and you have a place to live. So once you get that, you basically have everything you need. That's why you want to stockpile food because... After you pay your rent, if you have food, basically you have everything you need to survive. And so chances are is if there's things you don't have and you've been getting along okay without it, you can get along a little bit longer, you know, right out this uh, recession. Uh, say, okay, I'm going to get through this as good as I can. So you have food, water, and shelter, and you need heat. So you need your utilities. So I have 10 ways to save money on food. Mark down food. That's how I bought the pork chops. And I'm going to be looking for some more marked down hamburgers. Also, if you buy uh, hot dogs uh, marked down then uh, you can get the good hot dogs for the same price as the cheap ones. Same thing with hamburgers. Uh, $1 food. A lot of times, you know, I will just buy a bunch of food at the dollar places. I, I did that today. I bought quite a bit of food there. Um, grocery outlet would be more like mark markdown food. Just plain old cheap food. You know, you guys have seen me do that. Pork and beans, hot dogs, fish sticks, um, hot dogs and french fries, cans of chili on french fries. Uh, you know, just plain old cheap food. Frozen food. You guys saw me do that. This would also be like dollar food. So I had, I like these. These are pancakes and sausage, a dollar. Barbecued sandwiches, a dollar. So this is cheap food at uh, burritos. So what I did is I stuck piled uh, chicken fingers and fries. So that would be like an example of cheap food and dollar food. You can get by on that. Uh, one of the things is you want to get enough food so that you're in no danger of running out. So if you're running out of food, it's better to have cheap food than no food. Soup and stews. 
Okay, uh, this week I made a uh, vegetable soup with hamburger vegetable soup with um, with dumplings and I just used biscuits from Walmart, 48 cent biscuits from Walmart and that was good. I still have some in there. And I made uh, tomato soup, that was good, that's vegetables. Eggs, eggs are really cheap. Sandwiches, uh, the peanut butter sandwich I had was really good. I, I, I enjoyed it, actually. Beans and cornbread, if you're new to beans and you make your beans in the crock pot, they're gonna come out a lot better. Stir fries, okay, if you learn like a basic stir fry, and, and you didn't have any meat, you could use eggs. You would just, eggs and, um, if you have two pieces of bacon and eggs, okay, now my gravy is looking good. Tuna sandwiches or tuna casseroles or tuna salads. So tuna is really cheap. So that's 10 cheap foods. Okay, now let me show you my, let me show you my gravy. This was in the oven. So take a look at this, you guys. You can get by on this. If, if all you had was some meat drippings and some powdered milk and some bread, you could get by on that too. Okay, so now let me find a big spoon if I possibly can. Right now, let's get some green on my potato. So this is a pretty decent pork chop meal. And not expensive at all. These, um, these pork chops are really super duper. Now, I made a really good dessert. Okay, so today I bought, first of all, I'm not, I hate fruit, but I do love grapefruit. All right, so here is what I made. Okay, I removed, I removed the grapefruit segments. See, here's the grapefruit sec segments. And at some point, probably tomorrow morning, tomorrow sometime, I will eat them. Then, I made, actually, I can't wait to eat this. I can be fairly good if I have my sugar free. So, what these are, is... These are my grapefruits, and look, I put my strawberry jello, and it, and it gives your, these could be oranges too, it gives your jello such a tasty taste. So out of one grapefruit, I got two jello cups, I got, you know, the, the grapefruit segments, and I have a little bowl of uh, sugar free jello that I bought so cheap at Walmart. So you guys, even though I moved, even though like I have all this work to do because I gotta get ready for Christmas, I'm still trying to be festive. And I think I'm succeeding. Okay, so that's the 10 uh, cheap meals. Another cheap thing is if you go to the kiosk and fill, refill your bottled water for 20 cents. Oh, I wanna show you my watch. Okay, I bought this Invica watch with the idea of selling it, but I really, really like it. And so I'm gonna keep it. Okay, now about Christmas. Okay, this year people could be stressed out about Christmas. And so a long time ago when I went to the self-help group, I mean, people would be hysterical over Christmas. And I'll never forget this one lady. And she said, just remember, Christmas is not every day of, of December. It is only one day. And I thought, yeah, that is true. I like to celebrate um, Christmas from Thanksgiving to January 15th, my birthday. But this year, um, 
Thanksgiving got messed up because the baby was being born and all the rest of the holidays were messed up because of the you know what. So um, I want to have the nicest Christmas I can, but we're all still really exhausted from the uh, baby thing. Sure is nice having the baby though. Uh, my child was born 40 years ago. And we haven't had any babies, so it's very fun. Okay, so now Christmas is just one day. So if you don't have much money, you could buy each person one gift. So one small gift of some sort, it, it goes back to a little food or a little money is better than nothing. So just one nice little gift of some sort. Or you could do cash, which I might do. We're going to see about that. Uh, you could buy your um, stuff at a thrift store. I buy stuff at thrift stores, nice stuff, all day long, like this watch. Um, you can make homemade gifts. Okay, so the crafts continue. So the little hat, see I got the little hat done. All I have to do is get some little pieces of foil, of, um, of um, felt to put over these knots so it doesn't hurt the baby's head. So I made this little hat. And now I'm working on the second dishcloth. So all it is is 40. Uh, the first one I did was a little too small at 30. So this is 40 across and they just make a square and then with another color I crochet single around the edges. So those are nice little gifts. So little homemade gifts of some sort. They can be anything. They could be ornaments. They could be anything. Uh, bake uh, tasty treats. Those could be gifts too like fudge or cookies. Um, I'm going to be making some uh, festive cookies that don't cost much. Uh, one good um, little treat around Christmas is popcorn and licorice. Um, also, you can re-gift stuff. If you have nice things, you could give some of your stuff away. Uh, you could clean the house really nice and try to create an exceptional tree with the stuff you have. So this year I'm not buying another tree. I'm just using the one I have because it's easier. It's in the garage. I got to get it. Okay, so, or you could clean someone's house up really good for a gift. That would be a great gift. <coughs> uh, you could offer a really nice car wash and you could also give that to yourself for a gift. I'm going to give that to myself for a gift. <laughs> Um, also, you could clean up the yard really nice and put up some Christmas lights. So that'd be a nice. So as we're going along now, you could start a resale business. And how you could do that is when you clean the house, all your excess stuff is your resale. You're going to have a yard sale or sell it on eBay or a swap meet. Or... <coughs> start a barter business so all the stuff you don't want would be neatly stacked somewhere like in the garage and you would either give it away to your friends and neighbors or you would barter it away that could be uh, really valuable if we get to the point where we are stricken with some basic income and no one has much money uh, you can make up your mind to recycle cans and bottles. My neighbor used to save them, and when he would cash them in, he would cash them in for about $60. I can't stand it because I'm always worried I'm going to get insects. But Okay, so now try to come up with one, like, okay, you're trying to come up with one thrifty idea, like I did eating more vegetables and buying the biggest containers. Also, um, try to come up with one new recipe per day. And I came up with a good one. So what I did is I thought, well, I wonder if I can find one. Well, I have this Emerald's cookbook. I don't know what happened to him. If Martha Stewart bought him out and he's done for, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so now... This is a great um, recipe right here. 
This is a really easy tuna melt. So back to the cheap food would be tuna. And all you need is English muffins. I saw they had those for a dollar at Dollar Tree. Uh, two cups of tuna salad. Thin slices of cheddar cheese or American. And then uh, you just, um, you know, lightly toast the English muffins and put the tuna on and then, you know, the cheese. I think that'd be good. I might make that. Maybe tomorrow. So... I'm going to start in my uh, notebook and, you know, write these, my cheap idea for the day and my new recipe. And all my um, new recipes have to be easy and cheap. And, and finding a new tuna recipe is really good because I have stockpiled a whole bunch of tuna and I want to use it up. Okay, now I was listening to this pastor and it was really disturbing to me he said you know it's very important that we go to church and he admitted that he had gotten the COVID and several uh, members in the church had gotten the COVID and they were all still meeting so um, I just want to say a true prophet will not lead the flock into danger if someone tries to lead you into a crowd for whatever reason, especially with the COVID spiking, who knows how many people were exposed just by one person. So a true prophet will not, I think we're going to be seeing more of this, lead the flock into danger. Um, I told you um, I was going to the Adventist church and they had some uh, uh, Adventist, it was in Africa, and they wanted to murder all the Adventists, and they got to the, um, they got to the pastor or the leader, and they said, if you don't tell everyone to come to the church, we're going to murder your family. And he did it, and they murdered them all. So you know they can get to anybody. People can. I think we're going to be seeing more of this. Uh, Jim Jones was an example. You know, I'm sure I heard stories about him long before they ever went to Guy Guyana about his temper fits and, you know, he was an out of control person. Also, if the pastors are busted for unseemly behavior, that is a bad sign because, you know, that that is just going to cause trouble for you if you follow suit. And then the other one that I can think of was Heaven's Gate, uh, where all the, the followers were murdered, and it was found that they had uh, mutilated genitalia. So there's just like no good spiritual reason for uh, mutilated other than they were, um, well, really, even this, uh, they were um, alien devotees. So the idea was they would kill themselves. I think they drank cyanide. A couple of them just uh, survived. But it's strongly possible they could have been murdered too because it was kind of like a wealthy little church. So, you know, uh, don't let anyone lead you into a group or a crowd right now. Don't go into big crowds of protests and violence because we had a lady out here shot in the head with a beanie bullet. And now, and now who's supposed to take, and she was some kind of a nurse, if you can believe. Uh, they shot one guy in the back around three times with a beanie bullet and just violence among the crowd. So just don't do it. And, and you know, uh, yeah, there are, uh, there are, um, you know, there's things going on that are not to our likings, but if we get ourselves hurt or killed, that isn't really helping any cause. So, um, God will lead you. And another thing, when things get really bad, uh, you're basically going to have to um, kind of fend for yourself, really. And so, you know, I told my friend, uh, pray for some of those angels to help you. And if you can believe this, I saw her today, you know, my friend, they said you have three, three um, months to live. And it, it was really bad, you guys. So 
if you have some extra prayers. Uh, when people get into fear, that's when other people can become dangerous. So you have to be very, very careful. A true prophet will not lead the flock into danger. So, you know, that is like a good rule to bear in mind. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.